Hey, we're back for the final segment in our Democratic debate this evening. Uh, here's the final segment intro. My name is Rafael Carranza. I cover the U.S.-Mexico border for the Arizona Republic and the USA Today Network. Mexico is Arizona's number one trading partner. Last year, the two shared over $15 billion in trade. A lot of that is due to the North American Free Trade Agreement, which has facilitated trade between the three North American countries. However, the future of that remains uncertain as the sixth round of negotiations start this week. Okay, we'll start the first question uh, for you, Dr. Tipperneni. Um The administration has backed out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and has reopened negotiations on NAFTA. And uh, Mexico is Arizona's number one trade partner um, at this point. Um, should we end NAFTA? Is that good for Arizona? No, we should not end NAFTA, and it is not good for Arizona. As you mentioned, Mexico is one of our largest trading partners, not just for the country, but primarily in Arizona. Uh, we, um, the impact it would have on our local economy is immeasurable. It would affect so many aspects, agriculture, um, the IT fields, um, construction, lots of areas. And look, I am all for making sure we get the best deal for America. That should always be our goal. And as President Trump claims to be, he's a master negotiator. Um, that being said, we have to make sure that we remember about the consequences of a decision like that. And it's not something that can be taken lightly. We have major uh, trade agreement for a reason. It has been to our benefit, and we should continue to make sure it optimizes. It's optimal for our workers, but it's not something that we should be considering breaking from. Okay. Ms. Westbrook. We absolutely should not pull out of it. Uh, Mexico and Canada are our two biggest trade partners. We shouldn't, we shouldn't pull out of no an agreement that we have with, with countries that are helping our economy and giving back to our state. Um, we can build something that is more beneficial for us and is something we should talk about and something I will actively do when elected to serve you. Okay. Uh, next question, we'll start with you, Ms. Westbrook. Uh, the massacre in Las Vegas last year again raised the question of what, if anything, we should do about gun laws or mental health. Um, do we need to make any changes on either of those fronts? Uh, and if not, do we need to accept the risk of these kinds of massacres as a fact of American life? No. Um, we've already had 13 shootings, and it's already the month. It's only the month of January. Um, we need to champion um, common sense gun legislation. Um, have stricter background checks. Close the uh, gun shell loophole, um, and. Any accessory that makes an illegal a legal firearm illegal should be banned. Um, we shouldn't have accessories like that available. And we need to address the issue with domestic violence as well, because victims of domestic violence um, are oftentimes five times higher, um, more likely to die in a shooting um, from their partner. That's actually the greatest cause of shootings, um, is murder-suicides. And it's an all-intertwined issue. And so common sense gun legislation is the only answer. Okay. Dr. Tipperneni. So I see this as a public health issue, Ron. Um, coming from my background, I had the misfortune of seeing gun violence up close and seeing the destruction it wreaks, not just on the victim, but on the families, on the communities. And it's heartbreaking. I support the Second Amendment, but I also support common sense gun safety laws, and I don't believe those are mutually exclusive. Look, we did research and found out that seat belts made people safer. We did research and made sure that and found out that car seats made babies, children safer. Guns are no different. We should be protecting the general public. The vast majority of even NRA members support comprehensive background checks. We should be closing, as she mentioned, the gun show and the online loopholes because that allows people to bypass those background checks. We should be making sure that there's proper training and that people are obtaining it through legal channels. And I support the right of anyone to obtain it through legal channels. That's not the question. It's the folks that obtain it otherwise. And we should implement these common sense safety reforms just like we would for anything else, whether it's a car, a bike, or anything else, to keep the general public safe. Okay. Um, we'll start with you on the next question. Uh, according to NASA, 2016 was Earth's hottest year on record. Uh, 2017 was the second hottest on record. Um, nine of the ten hottest years in Phoenix have happened since 2002. 
Um, show of hands, do you believe in human-caused global warming? Okay. <laughs> no brainer. The question then, to start with, what should we do about it? Well, uh, I'm a strong believer in the science, coming from background of science, but as as uh, I think many people will tell you, you don't have to be a scientist to understand that climate change is real. Uh, we see it all the time. There are extremes of weather all around our globe. Um, and the data is consistent. And if we don't act immediately, and if we don't put proper uh, uh, actions and uh, initiatives in place, um, our children, our grandchildren, will be suffering the consequences of these poor decisions. You know, Arizona should be at the the forefront of fighting climate change with um, amazing, um, innovative, renewable energy initiatives. And we should be leading that with solar power, wind power. Um, this is something that would not only benefit our concerns about climate change, but it would be great for job growth. We would create, uh, a, you know, just an innumerable number uh, of jobs if we invested in that, but we have to make sure that the leaders who are making those, those decisions believe in the facts, and the science is real, we need to act on it, and Arizona should be at the forefront of that. Okay, Ms. Westbrook? Well, how I look at this is the same way I look at all of my policies. I look them through an intersectional lens. All of these issues that we talk about every single day on the campaign trail are all intertwined. Climate change is real, we, can't, we all know that. Um, the science is there. The only reason why we're not addressing it is because of the money in Washington, D.C. The fossil fuel industry, oil uh, executives, they're third in line for the given the most already in 2017, um, set third behind um, the healthcare lobbyists. Um, if I'm elected to serve you, I will be one more co sponsor of Tulsi Gabbard's Off Fossil Fuels Act by 2035. We need to reinvent the economy into a green economy, create new jobs, create innovation, invest in things like windmills, solar panels, and making them more affordable so they're on every roof. Um, right now, there's, you just saw lately, last week, there was a 30% increase um, with imports from solar panels. Um, so it's real, and I will be one more voice to combat climate change in Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, next question, we'll start with you, Ms. Westbrook. Um, the regime in North Korea says it now possesses deliverable uh, nuclear weapons. Realistically, what can America do uh, about this situation to help manage it? Well, what we need to do is actually have open dialogue um, and talk um, with all of these world leaders and, and bring um, North Korea to the table. Um, just like Washington, D.C., there's no talking. There's no talking in North Korea. We really need to be strict on China. That's their biggest trade partner. I think we need to hold them more accountable than we are. Uh, we need to be tougher on them because we have a great relationship with China. Well, we should be. They hold lots of our debt. Um, Let's begin the discussion, bring everybody to the table, and find a, a common sense way to prevent war. Because that's the last thing we need to do is send more children to wars that are unending, uh, like Afghanistan, for example. Let's bring troops home, not send more to war. Okay. Dr. Dupernani? You know, North Korea is not a new problem, certainly for this administration. Uh, it's been a concern for, for a long time for our country. Um, and it's clearly a very destabilizing force in that region. We know that. Uh, and we have to be making sure that we are communicating with our allies in the area. Uh, you know, South Korea, Japan, obviously, they're close in proximity. We have to make sure we are talking, having dialogue, like she mentioned, with China. They have a big impact in, in, in how North Korea is able to function. And they are one of our allies. We need to be, need to be communicating and working together. And look, it doesn't help to be, you know, when you hear these bombastic provocations coming from the current administration, there's no need to sort of poke a bear. Um, we have to make sure we're being very mindful. We don't want them to advance their nuclear, um, uh, nuclear plan. And there are millions of lives at risk. We have to be very mindful of that. We should be exhausting every diplomatic option we have before we ever consider going to another option. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of uh, agreement on some of these issues. Uh, very quickly, in 30 seconds each, uh, Dr. Kipernani, we'll start with you. Uh, help the voters who will be voting in this primary decide what separates you two. What do you see as the biggest difference from uh, Ms. Westbrook for you? Well, I just, uh, look, my skill set is that of problem solving. 
and it's basically been about listening to people, working on nonpartisan basis uh, with proven results of being able to diagnose issues and being able to come up with real life solutions, whether it's been in the emergency department or in advancing cancer research. I've, I've, I have those results. I know I'm able to talk to people regardless of uh, their ideology. It's never been about Democrat or Republican, black or white. It's been about the crisis at hand, being able to work together, and really coming up with a solution that impacts people's lives. And that is something I've been able to do, and that's something that is sorely lacking in D.C. right now, and I'm ready to bring that skill to D.C. Okay. Ms. Westbrook, what separates you from Dr. Tiffany? Well, I can, I can proudly say that I'm the only candidate um, that has pledged not to take corporate lobbyist money and pledged to um, help amend Citizens United. Um, the money in Washington, D.C. is destroying it. Um, it's withholding our voices. The, at the root of all of all of this is campaign finance reform. We need to address it. I'm the only candidate that has been talking about it actively. Um, so if you want somebody that's not going to be influenced by money, that is me. As you saw over the last year, I haven't been holding fundraisers. I've been investing in people. I'm running to be a public servant, not to my highest donor. Okay, let's move to closing statements uh, by the candidates. Uh, we will start with Dr. Tipper Nenny. One minute. So... First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much, Ron, and Arizona Republic, and uh, AZ Central again for hosting this uh, important dialogue about critical issues that impact the families, our neighbors of CD8. You know, this country is hurting. Um, there's a lot of divisiveness, and families are really worried. They're worried about their future, their children's future, their grandchildren's future. Our elderly neighbors are worried. You know, my work has always been about problem solving and making that positive impact. I've been focused on healing, whether it's been in the emergency department, in my research, as a mom, part of the community. It's been about healing. And it's never been about partisanship. It's never been about Democrat or Republican, Christian or Hindu, white or black, male or female. It's been about solving the problem at hand. And there are critical problems that folks are telling us about every day when we go into their doors and they're asking for solutions. So I'm excited and I'm ready to take that passion, those problem solving skills, working on a team based approach to DC where those skills are sorely lacking. I'm ready to contribute to the healing that our country needs. And uh, I'm incredibly proud to be running. Again, I'm Dr. Hero Tipperneni, and I'm honored and humbled to be running, and I'd be grateful uh, for your support. Okay, Ms. Westbrook. I would like to thank you as well for putting on this tonight. It is great. It's a great show of democracy to have candidates in a primary here in Congressional District 8. It's great to have options as voters. I want everybody to know when I am elected to serve you that I am serving you. It's time that we restore our democracy and empower everyday people. If we want to fix the problems in society, we want to fix Washington, D.C., we elect more bricklayers, more single moms, more teachers, more people that are a reflection of the people that are struggling. All of us need a seat at the table. It's time to restore our country to the people who it belongs to, the American people. And if you vote for me, that will be one more vote for that. Thank you. Okay. A reminder why we're here. Uh, we have uh, election dates uh, approaching. Um, just a reminder, uh, the special election dates that are in play. Um, the special election primary will be held on February 27th. Early voting begins next week. And we will also have a general election after that, uh, pitting the Democrat against the Republican. That election will be held on April 24th, and um, that that uh, early voting period, I'm sorry, I uh, didn't see what the date was on that. So um, the, um, the special election, again, is uh, on March 26th is when early voting uh, begins for the general election in that race as well. Um, Okay, so uh, that concludes tonight's Democratic debate, and thank you for watching. Our thanks to the candidates for participating, and good luck to both of you. Uh, you. If you missed part of this debate or want to see the Republican debate from last night, both of these debates will be uh, still on our website at azcentral.com, and uh, you'll be able to watch them in their entirety. Uh, for the whole AZ Central team that made this possible, thanks for watching, and good night.